Loyal Coventry City fans are heading to the Rico Arena right now for tonight's home game against Tranmere Rovers. And while a victory would be welcome, what they need even more is certainty over the club's future. The stadium is owned by ACL, which is being backed financially by Coventry City Council, as we reported last night. But ACL have yet to reach a deal with the football club, who are demanding they pay less rent and have even threatened to move to a new ground. Well, the RICO is very successful in its own right. Football is only part of the business. So how important are Coventry City to the future of the RICO arena? The annual rent comes in handy, one and a quarter million pounds a year. The arena also gets the income from drinks and snacks for 11,000 fans on match days. And there's the prestige of being a football venue, which of course helped them attract the Olympics last summer. But could the RICO manage without Coventry City? Well, the club make up only around 20% of the arena's total income. The stadium is in the running to be one of the hosts for the Rugby World Cup in 2015. And the RICO is now a major destination for concerts and conferences. Our reporter Kevin Reid is at the ground ahead of tonight's game. So, Kevin, what's the latest? Well, this, Mary, is a magnificent stadium. Everybody agrees on that, fit for Premiership football. But, of course, Coventry City are no longer in the Premiership. They're not even in the Championship. They're in League One. And as a result of that, attendances have dwindled and the football club say the rent is too high for a League One club. Now, the stadium op operators earlier in November offered to cut the rent from uh, £1.2 million per year down to 400000 They also offered to give match day takings for pies and beverages to the club. That's worth about another 100000 But still, Coventry City have said that is too much and higher than the League One average. Well, ACL since then have demanded the money officially and, in a sense, are in a position where they could force the winding up of Coventry City. ACL have also said that this, as you said, Mary, is a very successful venue even without the football. Clearly, it makes things a lot easier if Sky Blues are playing here and we get all the fans here, but we have a robust, robust business. We're business, entertainment and sport. We had the Olympics in the city, brought £80 million in. We've got Bruce Springsteen on the 20th of June. We've got Muse playing here on the 22nd of May. We're really, really busy. Well, I'm joined now by lifelong Coventry City fan and season ticket holder Nigel Warren. Nigel, what do you make of all this going on in the background, trying to be a fan? Absolutely heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking for all the generations, from grandparents to mums and dads to children and great-grandchildren. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's just not right all around. What do you want to see happen? A lot of heads around the table, head banging each other, good handshakes, plenty of smiles, and hopefully get this club back where it belongs in, in the Premiership with smiles and a family environment. Well, of course, there is football on here tonight. Coventry City take on top of the league Tranmere Rovers. Uh, one of the match summarisers on BBC Coventry in Warwickshire tonight is a guy called Klaus Jorgensen, and he was the first footballer ever to score a goal at this stadium. With that, it's back to you. Kevin Reid, many thanks.